whenever anybody has done research on things like, for example, social capital, they found people who are engaged in areas where people know each other, look after each other, contribute to health services, um, you know, support the police or support, you know, the councils. Those areas tend to enjoy better health. Those areas tend to enjoy better outcome from services and they're better funded. So by virtue of social capital alone, we can see that that has enormous benefits to society. And, and so co-production is a vehicle to achieve social capital. And it's that because if you've got people who live in a certain neighbourhood or in any city who are bothered about what's going on in that city, who vote, who um, you know, talk to the police about you know what needs to be done to cut down crime and who sit on GP panels to tell them about what the health issues are or who are supporting researchers with ways to cut down on, say, um, obesity or air pollution, all of those sorts of things. It's communities who are taking ownership of issues with the providers and the implementers, which gives it a better chance of it working. And any society where social capital has been sort of pushed into the right direction has always found that it bears an amazing fruit. And I think for that reason alone, we need to try and work out ways to make that happen more and more, especially for people um, and for societies which have not had those opportunities to influence services, um, programs and research.